This is Twit. I know, Norm, you've looked at a couple things lately that could kind of hint at like what Apple's thinking about and uh, what where this entire market is going. You looked at the Mojo, or is it Moho, augmented reality glasses <laughs> and the hands-on, uh, you did a hands-on with the Tilt 5 production AR glasses. I remember you talking about that a while back. Can you give us a preview of your coverage of that stuff? Yeah, those are interesting devices. I think neither of those are exactly what Apple's going to be doing. Their mm-hmm. first generation AR glasses probably akin to what you know Meta's doing with uh, their their Project Cambria glasses and pass through AR for productivity. Get those in the hands of developers. We don't know when that is, but the two devices you mentioned that I got to check out recently at the Augmented World Expo uh, are novel uses of AR. One. Mm-hmm out in the world now in Tilt 5 uh, and one far out into the future probably. Uh, Tilt 5's company created by uh, Jerry Ellsworth. She was previously at Valve. She's an amazing engineer, uh, done a lot of uh, awesome hacking uh, with um, uh, video game stuff in the past. And this company, a technology she really has been working on for a decade is AR glasses for tabletop gaming. So the idea is uh, you wear these Tilt 5 glasses. They have uh, Pico projectors built in two of them and they essentially uh, represent imagery for your eye, but as opposed to blasting images into your eye, they blast out into the world and they hit a retroreflective surface. So this game board they have, that has tracking markers on around the edge of it, um, mm. but the material, this gray material, essentially, it's a, it's kind of the same material that maybe your stop sign that you see on the street um, is made mm-hmm. out of. So when you shine light at it, it comes exactly back 180 degrees back into the light source. And so if you have the projector where your eyes are, uh, they do a little bit of bouncing around in the glasses, they go out toward the game board, then they come back at you, then you get stereo images that are augmented reality images. And they've worked with a bunch of developers over the past couple of years, um, video, to create video games, you know, essentially your your tabletop D&D, your, 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 uh, your um, uh, uh, Bomberman, Marble Madness, all sorts of those types right, of games, right. um, but you can play them um, asymmetrically uh, around the table, uh, remotely, and the effect is really stunning. It's really fun. Hmm. That's great. And does Tilt 5 work well, uh, even if you're wearing glasses? Like, that's always the issue with me. I don't know if you wear contacts to test these things, Norm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the video, I, I took off my glasses, but they're prototypes. It's um, mm-hmm. because there's not perfect alignment needed with the headset and your head, you can very easily just put them on the big sunglasses and they do work over even even big glasses. Um, and yeah, they've created some uh, technology to uh, to generate like a third person view so you can do like Twitch streaming while having some type of mixed reality view so people <laughs> can see you know, the, the dungeon you're crawling through. Uh, and that controller is really neat because it's a hybrid, uh, almost like a Wiimote style, you know, uh, wand, but on its side works as your standard gamepad. Uh, really clever ideas, and their Discord is full of amazing developers creating uh, fun things using their SDK to use as they're shipping to Kickstarter mm-hmm. backers. You know, I okay, so I, Brianna, I, you, I you're a game developer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go I've, ahead. I've quite I, a you bit sound amazed VR. by this. <laughs> well, I, I'm interested in this. I, I've long thought mm-hmm. that VR, the AR had a better chance to catch on than, than VR because from a game development point of view, you have to get so specialized when you're developing things for VR, like things like optimizing your draw calls from the center of the screen so you don't have nauseousness, uh, thinking about different movement paradigms is one of the reasons why it's so incredibly expensive to develop VR experiences, which is sad because there's very little of a marketplace to actually sell games. Um, everything I'm seeing here in this video, Norman, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong here. This looks like it's being made with, with the Unity. Uh, is that correct? Yep. I, I believe so. so and yeah. Oh, I'll, just I'll a lower also... cost overall. Yeah. Yes, lower cost and lower performance uh, overhead needed. Uh, they're doing reprojection, um, basically doubling up the frames or tripling them up in the headset itself. So the projectors are running at 180 hertz. But she, Jerry says that there, a lot of the developers don't even need to optimize as their first pass. They can run it at you know 30 or 60 on hmm. Intel integrated graphics, and it'll run smooth. And I can the production units actually prove that out. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. Um, you know, you were talking at the beginning of this uh, about how the 
the signs are there that Apple is bringing a VR product to market, AR product to market rather. And I just tell you, someone that works with their, you know, their SDK, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's the writing is so on the wall because you don't look at Apple leaks. You ask yourself, like you follow the state of the union and see the direction that Apple has been going with uh, basically their developer tools. It was not that long ago. The only thing you had was Sprite Kit for, for building games. And yeah, you know, today you've got Scene Kit and the 3D tools are, are far more sophisticated. I think most of us would agree the pipeline of uh, Apple's vision of plugging powerful uh, you know, graphics cards into your Mac and connecting a monitor to it, that ended up being a technological dead end. But you know, I, I see this and I just see I see a more tenable development pipeline to get it out there. And I think that's the really core problem. I, Magic Leap, mm -hmm. I think, failed not because the idea is bad, but that despite all the money they spent on it, they didn't bother to develop something that like you could, that, that did something better than what you would get on a screen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you're looking to sell hardware, you've got to be able to get developers to be able to work with it in a cost efficient way. And this just it looks like a flat out better solution to me. Yeah. yeah okay. Can you tell us uh, anything about the contact lenses, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and one thing I'll, I'll lead off because I know mm -hmm. Magic Leap announced their Magic Leap 2 for a yeah. release later this month. And it's it, one of their big failures. September was 30th. Out. Magic that's Leap right, 2 is, right. or, does yes. exist. It'll be September 30th for thirty two ninety nine. If you really oh have that money, you want to spend it. But go, go ahead, Norm. Right. Yeah. But they're smarter, I think, Magic Leap now move, shifting over to not consumers because they made had such a big push. Probably, again, the VC problem. They had so much money put into it that the expectation was right. that they would be a, a mass market consumer product. And you had all these mm -hmm. wired covered stories and, and they put all their money not necessarily into SDK or developer relations, and they did have that, but into solving a fundamentally hard optical problem uh, in, in trying to promise uh, optics that would solve this, this conversion accommodation conflict. And from what I understand, or what, what, I, what I, the, the assumption is going into whatever Apple's going to do is I don't think they're going to necessarily try to solve the optical problem. They might do a pass-through solution, a pass-through mm -hmm. video solution, which uh, which is what Meta's doing with their headset that they're hopefully announcing later this year. Uh, but those contact lenses, so this company called Mojo Vision, and what they've done is they have a prototype, they say feature complete, a contact lens that has a 0.5 millimeter micro LED at the center of it. So mm -hmm. it's a 280 pixels wide monochrome right now, green color. Uh, but uh, in that uh, the contact lens, they have this display as well as radio, and most of it's actually battery on that PCB, which will then relay to essentially um, something you wear on your neck, like a relay for compute. So no heavy processing. Uh, that all happens on this wearable, but wirelessly they would transfer imagery um, to, with a user interface they designed. And the field of view, it's 15 degrees field of view, so they describe it as like a spotlight. And what I was able to try is a hand held version of it, not plugged into my eye, but a, <laughs> a thing I could hold on a stick and then move it around. Yeah. And as I moved it around, yeah, you could I could read text clearly in this huh. you know 50, uh, 280 pixel wide uh, circle and kind of move it like a flashlight around to hover over icons. And it's not head look, it is really eye looking uh, because it's on a contact lens. So as I move my eye around, as the person who would be wearing this would move their eye around. Uh, it would be tracking them with an IMU in the contact lens itself. That's pretty wild. Yeah, I, I uh, don't know. Yeah. It's a contact <laughs> lens where, like, you, know, you, you get you get so attached to certain brands because they're softer or cleaner or even disposable mm -hmm. lenses that something like that, and you think about things going wrong and having electrical components <laughs> near your eye, I'm just... You don't want, you don't want your board, contact lenses to overheat or explode? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That is sure. absolutely. That's how I feel about it too. Exactly. I don't. I yeah. wear glasses. I, I don't like putting things in my eye. I've heard horror stories. You know, my yep. wife's had contact lenses rolled to the back of her eye. So uh, presumably I've these are. That. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it just sounds like I don't. I don't want that to happen. It's wireless here. So like, how would you fish that out? Uh, and there's the whole cleanliness <laughs> of it, right? Like this isn't going to mm -hmm. be disposable. Presumably, whenever they guess this gets to market, it'll be expensive, custom fit for your eyeball. Uh, so it's you know it's 
Can it, I know glass contact so, lenses in the past have had irritability. So yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. I have to ask Norm. I, I saw this when they, they first went public back in like 2020 at CES or CES 2020. And one of the things they were talking about a lot was the idea that, that folks with low vision or vision impairment, they were working on solutions mm. to help people to sort of augment or create the, the, you know, the ability to see better or at least to be able to discern objects in rooms and stuff. Are they talking about that at all or is it almost kind of entirely a heads up display conversation from them now? I think for I think it's a head up display because it's fundamentally they're using the same types of contact lenses on their outer and inner shell. They can do corrective um, mm-hmm. lensing, so you can people could wear it as a contact lens. But from I think their business purpose, they want this to be for medical fields, probably military, wherever people would have their hands busy but need to have some type of heads up information. Um, yeah, and mm. the user interface aspect of it is really interesting because even though even as fast as our eye tracking might be and as responsive as it might be. Like imagine if you had a full UI, but you could only see a circle of it at once. Like you would need some type of indicator of when Mm -hmm. information was being updated in the periphery uh, or be extremely familiar with that UI uh, to not, you know, I I don't want to have to mouse over or look over to notice that there's a icon in this right corner or left corner, um, which is kind of how they're designing it right now. Oof. I, I will say the uh, the smart contact lenses in the new Batman movie is like the one thing that really irked <laughs> me about that movie. It's like uh, you you have smart contact lenses recording video. How's this working, Batman? <laughs> where's where's it being stored? What's charging it? Um, I, I I'm kind of right there with you too, Norm. Like the the ickiness of it. I I've, I've never gotten contacts uh, just because I think early on I I think I have a stigmatism and it was hard to uh, to get contacts to work with that. Now they work and I'm just like too grossed out by the idea. But I also test enough VR headsets where I'm like, <laughs> I am I going to get contacts just to better test VR headsets? Because I guess I have to because that's the world we're living in. I don't know. Um, thankfully, some have glasses inserted, so I, I've been able to use those. 